the interpretation guidance will be very important in the ACCA SBR exam because questions may be set by the examining team by taking examples from the IFRIC. So let's cover the IFRIC number one, changes in assisting the commissioning, restoration and for similar liabilities. Now, before we dive into any further, let's look at a particular example related to the XYZ company. It's an oil extraction facility company that at the start, it has already recognized a liability of $1 million because the XYZ Limited will have to decommission, which means get rid of its facility in later years. So according to the environmental laws and regulation, it will have to recognize that the commissioning liability. And of course, it has added the 1 million to the cost of PPE. Right, now for the decommissioning liability here, firstly, the transaction itself is related to the oil extraction facility. That is an example of an item of PPE, which means the property plant equipment, according to the IAS number 16. It needs to be recorded or measured at historical costs at the very start. So, for example, how much money is that you paid for that oil extraction facility? You will need to capitalise it as the property plant equipment. But at the same time, here, we are talking specifically about you need to get rid of these late in the year. So, for example, 20 years later, and to recognize that $1 million of a decommissioning liability. So where should we account for that decommissioning liability? According to IFRIC number one, it says that you will need to recognize this according to IAS number 37, provisions, contingent liabilities, and contingent asset. So here, I'm going to be introducing my own mnemonic for the provision accounting is that if you fulfill, as you can see, the POR criteria, which means more than 50% chance is that you need to pay for that money, and arising from the present obligation, and here, of, of course, is from the legal obligation according to the environmental law, you can make reliable estimate. Okay, so here, that 1 million would be the fair value because it seems to me that you discount the future cash flows into today's terms. Of course, present value would be an example of fair value as well. Yes, you can reliably estimate that according to your experience. So if that's the case then, at the very start, for that 1 million, I will need to debit the property plant equipment, usually at cost of 1 million. At the same time, I will need to credit the provision liability, which means to increase the provision liability in the SFP, Statement of Financial Position, by $1 million there. Of course, after we've entered into the journal entries like that, subsequently, which means one year later, we'll need to depreciate the PPE which means that $1 million, for example, over the next 20 years, so each and every year, we'll need to recognize the depreciation expense by debiting depreciation expense and to credit the accumulated depreciation, which means to credit the pp &E. At the same time, very importantly, is that you will need to provide for the finance costs based on the provision liabilities that you recognize. So, for example, in order to arrive at that $1 million of a decommissioning liability, you discount the future expenses into today's terms using the 5% as the discount rate. So each and every year, you will need to increase that liability up by 5%, okay, based on the cumulative amount. So this exercise is called unwinding, okay, so 
uh, you will need to unwind that discount of $50,000 in each and every year. Of course, in the second year, that the unwinding costs will certainly be that because for the first year, $50,000 recognizing that finance costs. So up to the end of the first year, the liability will be $1 million plus 50000 And of course, for the second year, based on the cumulative amount, you will need to recognize that 5% as the finance cost in year two. By debiting the finance cost and to credit the provision liability. So make sure that you're ready for that. Of course, in the exam scenario, I've changed a bit the information a bit further that maybe in the second year, that due to changes in regulations, we estimate the cost of decommission would increase by 200,000. So if that's the case then, I will need to put that increase of 200,000 into the pp &E again, and in the provision liability again. Okay, so make sure that you are ready for that, because that will be a change in accounting estimate, and this is according to the IAS number eight, using the prospective adjustment method. However, in the actual exam, if you are tested about the IFRIC number one, although the examiner will not specifically say that this is the IFRIC number one, but what sort of general IFRS knowledge that you can dump okay, in your exam? Firstly, you can say that the decommissioning liability, you will need to adjust the carrying value of the pp &E as a new cost. So adjusting that carrying value by incorporating the decommissioning liability would be very important there. At the same time, of course, that's the bonus point, that if a change in liability results in an addition to the asset cost, for example, $200,000 there, we will need to consider whether this new carry amount of asset would not will be recoverable or not. The potential impairment, according to the IAS number 36, impairment of asset later on. Okay? That may be one of the impairment indicators that we need to perform the impairment review test. At the same time, talking about the subsequent measurements related to the depreciation of the pp &E. and also the changes in liabilities, of course, uh, will need to recognise the additional finance costs. So you can copy and paste these in into your answer, plus the POR criteria, so you can earn a lot of marks related to general IFRS application, uh, so in the SBI exam. Right. I'm going to be stopping this section now for the i number one. I hope you enjoyed this section because in this short recording, I've uh, brought a lot of i together to recap on those. Just a short introduction of myself. My name is Steve Chen, the fellow member of ACCA, the current ACCA exam marker. And also I've published four accounting books related to i and the ACCA AB magazines, technical writer, for the IVAS column. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye. ABC, accounting for your future.